Hey, Coach Carlson, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Yeah, of course. So you've been in Wake Forest since 2013. 11 years later, here we are down the line. I wanted to ask you, how has college football changed from your perspective, especially with the NIL coming into play, the expansion of the transfer portal, everything that's happened pre and post COVID? Coach, to your left, far left, young lady in the pink towards the wall, fourth row. Hey, Coach, this is Anna Adams with 24-7 Sports. Um, today being reported that roster sizes, I believe, are on pace to increase to 105, just as you figure out how to allocate resources. Um, what do you foresee as the biggest challenges there? It's just dealing with a bigger roster and, and, and um, scholarship. Well, I Coach, to your right, third row, gentleman in the maroon shirt. Hey, Coach, Scout Hughes with WBRF. Uh, at this time last year, we had a different scheduling model for the ACC. Obviously, with expansion, we have a new scheduling model. Um, how excited are you for, to uh, play Duke and NC State more regularly and, to a lesser extent, North Carolina? We're very excited. Uh, when the old scheduling model, <laughs> the oldest, newest model, uh, one of the really negatives of it is right now our rivalry with NC State is the second longest continuous rivalry in the country, I believe, behind Wisconsin and Minnesota. And we were going to lose that. And so if it took bringing in two West Coast teams and a team from Texas for allow us to play NC State every year, uh, then it's all been worth it. So we love our rivalry with them. We love our in-state rivalries. The history of Wake Forest and the ACC is – Tobacco Road in our in-state games. And our players like those games, our fans like those games. And honestly, for a team uh, on the East Coast, you know, we're gonna have to travel to California probably once every other year. Uh, when we played in the Military Bowl, half our team had never been to DC. When we played in the Pinstripe Bowl, three quarters of our team had never been to New York City. And I would imagine 80% of our team has never been to California. So it's a great life experience for our players. We'll go out there a day early. We'll do something with them, adjust to the time change. And I think it's all a healthy, positive experience for our student athletes. Coach, keep it on the right-hand side, far right, fourth row, David Teal. Dave, over here. David Teal from the Times-Dispatch. Oh, Richmond. David, I remember you well. I, <laughs> Richmond days. Well, and, and when you were at Richmond, you competed in a league that was accustomed to multiple playoff bids every season, including your team. Did that become a recruiting sales, part of your recruiting sales pitch, and related how essential will it be to, for the ACC to be a multiple bid playoff league? So you're, you're dating me now, but you know I was in that league when it went from the Yankee Conference to the A-10 to the CAA. And that was certainly a sell in that league, that we were one of the stronger, back then, 1AA, now FCS conferences, that we consistently got multiple bids. And I think that's our challenge now in this conference, is to establish a level of play and to have enough teams that we become a multiple bid conference. So the positive for us is, you know, being in the same division as Florida State and Clemson for so many years, right? The second that you don't win that game, your postseason hopes were dashed. And I think the good thing now is that you can maybe have a hiccup early and it doesn't eliminate your goal of making the playoffs. So I think it's a selling point. I think our challenge in the ACC and as ACC coaches is let's put a product on the field that warrants getting a second, third bid. And then once we get in there, we've got to make noise. You know, there's, I don't think we have a football problem in our league. I think we have a perception problem. And the only way to change that perception is to put teams in. And then once we get in there, win those games against those other two conferences. Coach, thank you for your time. You can switch places with Jasheen, uh, JD as he likes to be called. We'll have about five minutes with J.D. at the podium. Folks, again, please reintroduce yourselves or introduce yourselves to our student athletes, and we'll see where this goes. So, J.D., we will start in the first row right in front of you to your left. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Your coach talked about the fact that you could all be in the NFL 
at this point. Why play, continue to play for Dave Clawson? Why continue to stay at Wake Forest and see this through all the way to the end? Well, it's a multitude of reasons. Uh, for one, I respect Coach Clawson a lot. Uh, I feel like he's a man of integrity. Uh, I feel like that he's not just a football coach. I feel like he's a life coach. So just being at an institution like Wake Forest uh, sets me up, to, not just for the NFL, but for life as well. Uh, second, um, like I said, like we said last year, you know, it didn't really go too good for us. And I feel like that, you know, that this all season we played with, we worked out with a chip on our shoulders. Um, our mantra was earn it. And I feel like they had to earn everything we do. And uh, lastly, um, education. Uh, Wake Forest is one of the top educational schools in the country. And I feel like that um, coming back from my last season uh, allowed for me to get my degree. And then also, I'm um, thankful for Rota Quad. Uh, they, they blessed all of us in a way for us to, you know, be financially stable. So just uh, those reasons alone, I feel like uh, what made me come back and uh, just wanted to maximize my opportunity as a Wake Forest, Wake Forest Demon Deacon. JD, we'll stay on the left side, midway, right in the middle. Cam Lemons, 24 7 Sports, Demon Deacon Digest. JD, you're in year three of Brad Lambert's defense. The defensive line returns you, Kevin Pointer, uh, Kendron Wayman. There's a ton of snaps returning back. What should the expectation be for the defensive line going into 2024? Hungry. Uh, in order to play D line, you got to be hungry. Uh, like I say, you know, we face creatures every week. So just the fact that, um, you know, just offenses, high flying offenses and stuff like that. So just being able to just, you know, Stop the tempo, uh, change momentum. I feel like that you know D line is one of the most impactful positions on the team, uh, and I feel like just by having guys uh, returning starters like uh, Bryce Gaines, Kevin Pointer, uh, Kendron Wayman, and then have up and coming guys like Carrington Lee, uh, Tyler Walton, B.J. Williams. Uh, I just feel like that you know we're a close knit community and we're brother and we're brothers. So I feel like that you know by playing for each other, I feel like that the ultimate goal is you know just to be the best version that we can be. J.D. still on the left side. Follow the center aisle up and then just to the left. Ralph Amston, uh, College Football Apostles. Um, three years in a row you have killed NC State. But you're on a two-year losing streak. I just want to know how much that game means to you, what it means to be able to show out in that game every single year. Well, it means a lot. I feel like every game means a lot to me. But uh, personally, you know, just rivalry games, uh, it stands out a little bit more uh, because, you know, it's, it's the stakes for the best team in state. And uh, I pride myself on, like, being a Big Four team. Uh, I know the last time that, you know, Wake Forest was a Big Four champion was uh, back in 2019. Uh, so just being able to play schools like Duke, UNC, NC State, uh, I feel like it's a blessing because I feel like that I'm a part of the history. Uh, and then just lastly, you know, um, they're a good team. Um, I respect those teams. Uh, so just being able to play against them, you know, we have a chip on our shoulder. So we just got to show up and show out. JD, to your right, about the fourth row, hard right. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. I'm curious, in, in your career, how has your pass rush uh, skills and your uh, methods, how has that developed and, and changed in your time? Uh, just being a student of the game, I feel like that each and every week, you know, we face different tackles. Uh, not every tackle is the same. So just watching film and seeing uh, their, you know, their tactics and uh, how they pass set, how they, uh, how they protect the quarterback. So I know like which type of move that'll work this week. Uh, watching, you know, previous games where you know they face other pass rushes and stuff like that. See what moves that uh, they worked on or that, that they hit, either it worked or it didn't work. So just trying to apply that to my game. Just being a student of the game will probably take me far. JD, your last question from the podium. Given your experience, how will you know that the defense had a good preseason camp? Uh, just by swarming to the ball. I feel like uh, we pride ourselves on defense just to fly around, have fun. Uh, I feel like that, you know, my mantra is see ball, get ball. So wherever the ball is at, you know, we try to swim around the ball because, you know, the ball is the program. And uh, if you're around the ball, you know, good things can happen. JD, thank you. We can switch places now with Devontae. Devontae Gordon with us for a couple of minutes. Folks, same protocol. Please introduce yourselves in the media outlet with Devontae. Big smile heading to the podium now. Devontae, we will go right side, fourth row, fifth row, hard right. Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, Devontae, what is the the hunger in, in the program, considering the way last season went, uh, considering where you're at and your eligibility, uh, what is sort of the, the mindset and the hunger for, for you guys this season? Yeah, I say the hunger is high. Um, obviously, last season didn't go as we had planned, um, but that kind of motivated us this whole offseason. Uh, we've been working as hard as we ever have. 
I know a lot of guys in my room and every other room and all on the team, you know, uh, feel as though we left something on the table. Um, you know, there's every different direction you can say that went wrong last year, but at the end of the day, you got to take accountability and look at what you did wrong yourself. And I think that's something that everybody has really uh, uh, embraced this offseason. Um, and I think we're ready to, you know, attack this camp and see, you know, how far we can take it this season. Devontae, left side, first row right in front of you. Dan Tortora, wakeupcalldt.com. Devontae, you spoke on the fact that there are 17 starters coming back to this team. Just what it says, not only about this team as a unit from the inside out, but what it says in a world of college football where we're not seeing things like that anymore. Uh, yeah, um, 17 starters being back speaks volumes. I'll say one, the amount of trust that we have in coach. Um, because, you know, you're seeing a lot of players leave. All, the play, all of these players coming back represents the program that we have here. Um, and that last year wasn't last year wasn't an expectation. Last year wasn't a representation of us. Um, and that we that we trust that you know we trust each other to right what went wrong last year. And we trust that our coaches will lead us in the right way to you know bring Wake Forest to where Wake Forest wants to be. Devonte, from the podium, your time at Wake Forest, you've gone from the scout team to being a starter. That's that's a heck of a journey. How do you when you reflect? What do you think about? Uh, yeah, I, I think about that often. Um, I, uh, it's kind of been a long journey for me. I um, came in a, sem a semester late because I had an injury uh, in high school. And then I, when I first got here, I wasn't that experienced in football. But playing behind guys like Justin Haran and Zach Tom, who both also play left tackle, which I'm uh, going to play this year. Um, and they're now in the NFL, uh, continuing the ball and do their thing. Uh, really helped me with my development and, you know, just modeling how their work ethic and how they looked at the game and things like that. I think Michael Jurgens last year helped me to take a big step in my leadership as he, you know, rallied us all in times that we uh, might look down and things like that. That team never quit. So I, I think just being playing behind offensive linemen or with offensive linemen that were really good at the game and, you know, set really good examples for me helped me to come to where I am today. Question for Devontae. We're going to get the microphone left side of the room right in the middle. Cam Lemons, Demi Deacon Digest, 24-7 Sports. Devontae, last year it felt like Wake Forest kind of got away from what made them so good, especially offensively. Turnovers, inability to convert short yardage. So, um, sometimes you know, people just not knowing what play, what route they're running. What was the conversations like after the season of trying to get back to you know, what the Wake Forest way is and being a program that, you know, that doesn't beat itself? Yeah, I think a big part of that was taking accountability. Um, like I was saying, it's easy to point fingers. This went wrong, that went wrong. But you got to take accountability because I guarantee there was a time that I messed up last year. I guarantee there was a time that the guy next to me messed up last year and things that we can all prevent. Um, and like you said, things that Wake Forest wasn't used to doing. So I think looking at within yourself um, and fixing the things within yourself and trusting that our teammates who are with us, are, while I got to lead them, trusting that they'll be able to get those things right too. Devontae, your last question to the right, third row, gentleman in the blue. How you doing, Devontae? Good, and yourself? I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. Um, TJ Wilkerson, 90.9 The Light. Recently in the transfer, por transfer portal, sorry, I can't speak today. In the transfer portal, you picked up um, Hank Bachmeyer, former Boise State and Louisiana Tech quarterback. What's it been like working with him in the spring and the offseason? Yeah, I think Hank's been a great addition, um, both on the field and off the field. He's a great, he's a great person. Um, he's a good player. He's a great player. Um, he's somebody that's bringing competitiveness to the room. Um, he's competing for a job. Uh, either way it goes, you know, we, I have full support in both of those quarterbacks. Um, and, you know, any season you'll need two quarterbacks, uh, more or less. So uh, I'm really excited for him and what he can do, and I can't wait to see. Devontae, thank you. You can switch places now with Taylor, and Taylor Morin will be with us for the last couple of minutes. Taylor, we will start getting your microphone queued up. Taylor, your first one's going to come to your left, second row, right in the middle. Mayor Dungeon at the Players' Lounge. How are you, Taylor? I'm good. How are you? So, Commissioner Jim Phillips deemed this conference as the conference of the quarterbacks. What can fans expect for you to bring to the table? Conference of quarterbacks, with me being a wide receiver, it means I'm going to go out there and have to make some plays. Same with everyone in our room. We're really excited about our room. Getting a guy like Donovan Green back is huge for us. Guys like Walker Merrill, Horatio Fields, Deuce Alexander, um, Micah Mays, getting guys like that going. It's conference quarterbacks, but a quarterback's not a quarterback without some big time weapons on the outside that can make some plays. Taylor, right side, about the fifth row, all the way in the back. Uh, hey, Taylor. 
Mike Barber, Richmond Times Dispatch. Curious how your game and skills have developed during your time at Wake, and also the anticipation for you, the eagerness to kind of maybe even take on a bigger role uh, this year uh, from the receiver position. I'm really excited. I think being at Wake Forest, I've gotten the opportunity to play both inside in the slot and outside. Um, so being able to learn from the best of the best, it feels like our receiver room over the past couple of years has really been top notch and being able to learn from those guys has truly been a blessing. Le learning from a coach like Coach Higgins, um, former wide receiver coach and um, our current receiver coach, Coach Confessor, it's truly been a blessing and I've been the had the opportunity to wear multiple hats within the offense with also on special teams as well. So I'm very fortunate to be in the position that I am today. Taylor, back to the left side, just behind the young lady who asked the first question. Hey, Taylor, Tony Syracuse, last word on sports. How you doing? I'm good, how are you? All right, man. So in your time at Wake Forest, you've been on the receiving end working with a lot of different quarterbacks already because you've been there several years, a lot of quarterbacks. What did you see in spring from Bachmeyer and from Kern that gives you confidence for this season? A lot of things to be excited about. I think like Devo said, we have full confidence in both of those guys. Hank has come in, done a tremendous job getting up to speed with the offense. And Michael Kern obviously finished the year strong like he did last season. So excited about both of those guys. And like Devo said, we're more than likely going to need both of them to finish the season strong. And if it goes past that, we have some young talent in that room as well that we're excited about and know that can get ready. Taylor right in front of you, first row. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call, DT.com. Taylor, uh, over 160 catches, over 200, er, 2,200 yards receiving, and then you mentioned special teams, over 700 yards there. Of everything that we've seen from you already, what do you have left in the tank? What are we about to see this season? you got to leave it all out there, and that doesn't just start with me. It starts with our, all of our captains, all of our older fourth, fifth, sixth-year guys. We're an old football team, and we're ready to leave it all out there, whether that's you know, maximizing hours in the weight room, in the film room, you know, making sure we're doing everything right um, from a sleep and nutrition perspective. Like, it, it's really our last go around for a lot of us guys. So whatever it takes to win, we're, we're ready to do that and get Wake Forest right back where it belongs. Taylor right side, third row, gentleman in blue. How you doing, Taylor? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm doing good, thanks for asking. I'm TJ Wilkerson from 90.9 The Light. So I don't know if you're a man of stats, but you entered the top 10 in Wake Forest history in receiving yards, along with your former teammate, A.T. Perry. What does that mean to you? And have you talked to A.T. about that? About that? Sorry. It, mean, it means the world to me, and it's very humbling to be mentioned in, in that stat category and alongside A.T. But truthfully, when you say things like that, I think about the guys that made that possible. I think about you know catching balls from Sam Hartman. I think about you know Devo pass protecting. I think about um, Demont Claiborne, uh, Christian Beal Smith, guys like that back there, you know that are taking on linebackers blitzing full speed ahead. So it it really is a full team effort, and a lot of the times wide receivers get a lot of the credit, but you know there's a lot more that goes into it than just me catching the football. And you know, I'm very thankful to have had the success that I have because of those guys. Taylor, your last question from the podium. You are a multiple recipient of ACC All Academic Team at least three times. What does it take to balance academics and athletics? What's the trick? Time management. You don't come to a place like Wake Forest and, and not go after it and getting a meaningful degree. So just figuring out time, planning ahead to be able to study and then make sure that's not taken away from what, what I have to do on the football field. So time management is huge and I've been very fortunate to be able to get my undergrad de undergraduate degree in engineering from Wake Forest and now I'm working on my MBA degree um, finishing up in December. So that's something that I'm really excited about and like Devo said, uh, we're trying to win the game of life, not just the game of football. So it's, it's truly a blessing to be able to go to school like Wake Forest. Taylor, thank you very much. Wake Forest, good luck this season. Thank you. Go Deeks. Folks, remember, uh, reminder at 5 o'clock.